Hello, everybody, and welcome to a conversation with artist Carolyn Hinsky on site. Tell us where you are, Carolyn. I am at Page One Books, uh, 1808 Central Street, Proprietess Tress, uh, Brandy O'Brien, and my things are in the window. Your things are in the window because you're participating in the Evanston Art Connects window installation and Brandy is an awesome partner in the arts. And I'm just, I'm so glad that you were covered by your work here. That's so awesome. Um, well, tell us what you have in the window. What are we looking at? So this piece right behind me um, is probably my favorite piece that's hanging. It's a, a hand spun, hand dyed cotton silk beautiful triangle that can be worn lots of different ways um, in the window there's some scarves a lot of the hand dyed yarns that i like to use um, multiple yarn can you see that mm -hmm. one the purple and green is multiple yarns which i like to do at times too so yeah everything's my pattern because i'm not a good pattern follower <laughs> Uh, you know, directions. I have, I have an issue with following directions. So you make your own patterns? Yeah. I just, whatever, however I'm feeling at the time. So sometimes things get torn out and started again, and that's okay. That's okay. So everything is also, if you're making your own patterns, that means that everything is totally unique. Yes, everything is, is, is a one of a, a one of one. One of one. Okay, so what is in online in the virtual gallery pop-up? What kind of work do you have there? Similar so, to this behind you? Uh, actually, some of the pieces that are behind me are in the pop-up. Nice. Um, in the group show, I have a piece that I'm really, really proud of. Made a poncho um, in in purples and eggplants and a little bit of browns and and it's um yarn that was all hand dyed in colorado mm -hmm. woman, but it's different yarns and that one i just i did a couple of years ago and i just kept knitting and changing yarns and knitting and changing yarns and part way through realized in my stash i had some of the same colors from a yarn that a friend had brought me from iceland Ooh. So I put that in there also. Nice. And um, it's, it's an asymmetrical poncho, and it needs a, a tall person. Yeah. A tall person. We know a yeah. tall person. <laughs> um, because it, it's quite, the point is quite long. And I played with it and played with it, and on, on Nancy, my dress form, mm -hmm. I said, oh, and I took the point and pulled it up to the shoulder. So it completely changed the look, made it shorter. That it, but then you can pull it, and then I, I did some matching ties. So you can pull up the point and put it anywhere. Oh, and change the shape yeah. and the size. Nice. Yeah. yeah, so I'm really proud of that piece. So that's in the, that's in the, um, in the group show. And the colors of it are fantastic. The colors are so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I really, really like it. So, um, so what are you working on right now? I mean, you seem to be a very prolific, yeah. You've always got something on you. What am I supposed to say? What's on your needles? Sure. So. <gasps> what? And it's going to be a square. So, which I've made several of in quarantine. Well, I, not quarantine, but in, in stay at home. Mm -hmm. I've been making a lot of squares, which are fun for me because I can drink while I'm knitting, I can watch TV while I'm knitting, and it's, it's all good. And then, because it's a square, you can fold it in half, and it's a triangle, and make a triangle shawl. Right. Fold it long ways, you know, lengthwise, and have an oblong. And, and the, 
the multitude of ways it can be worn is just, is, I think, incredible. So I've really been having fun. So I have this silk, two colors of the silk yarn, and I'm just having fun. And you're sheltering in, you're obeying um, the shelter in, and how, is your practice changing? Are you eating and knitting 17 hours a day? What, what about it is different for you? Um, not a lot of it is really that different. Um, I'm retired from a, a professional work. Um, so I, I can knit whenever I want to. And because it's knitting, I can pretty much knit wherever I want to. <laughs> um, and I do. I, I have, when, when we lived, before we moved to Evanston a little over a year ago, go Evanston. Um, we lived in Taos, New Mexico, and my husband played in bands and was played in bars. And my husband, David Hinsky, the painter. David Hinsky, the painter. And I always had yarn knitting with me when I would go sit at the bar to hear him play. To the point where people, if I didn't have it, people were concerned that something was wrong. <laughs> You're like, are you okay? Are your hands okay? It, 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 it's not for what. So that's not happening here, mm -hmm. right? But um, no, I'm, and I, I haven't been able to go to, obviously, go to yarn stores. Right. Shopping online for yarn, you know, is not, because it's the tactile. It's, mm -hmm. you want to know how soft it really is. Oh, there's people looking at your scarves live behind you. That's so fun. Oh, cool. I love that. That's so cool. Yay. So did you, you obviously, you must have had an inventory uh, before Shelter and started. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I knit all the time. All the time. All the time. If I, if there's a day that goes by that I don't knit, I can't explain it. I, I mean, I'm just, I knit every day. And so I, I have had to go to, um, to my stash. Uh-huh. <laughs> which we will not really talk about because my husband said the other day, so how much, you've been knitting a lot. How much yarn do you have? It's private. It, it's fine. You don't need to know. It's sorry. Dave Pinsky, the painter, these are not things you need to know. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And don't start looking for it either. <laughs> Although I did, clean out, I cleaned out some old yarn and gave it to you for the kids. Thank you. When we called That's, for art supplies, we appreciate yep. that. Because, you know, yarn is always fun for, for kids' art projects, so. Especially for finger knitting. They oh, love yeah. that kind of stuff. And, you know, make glue pictures and balls you throw. Oh, no. Don't throw <clears throat> balls. No. So you've been, like you said, you're very prolific. You're always knitting. How long have you been into fiber arts? Have you, and even art in general, I know that you worked on the production side of it for many years professionally, making sure that art was seen and shared and ran galleries, but how long have you been practicing actually making? Um, I remember uh, gluing macaroni <laughs> to a cigar box and spray painting it gold for my father for Christmas one year, and I was probably seven or eight. <laughs> so a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a couple of years. <laughs> and I didn't, I sewed my, my grandmother, um, so made all of my clothes growing up mm -hmm. and I, I could point at a, at a picture of a blouse in a magazine and <gasps> she would, and she would make it for you. Oh, I love yeah. that. Yeah. And then my mom was a sewer taught my girl scout group. So we got our sewing badge <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I mean, it's just, it's in my blood. And um, for inspiration, is it fiber artists that you specifically turn to, or are you inspired by all mediums? Who inspires you? Well, my probably my very favorite artist of all time is Robert Motherwell. Mm. So this piece that I'm doing now, mm -hmm. I'm, I've been toying with the idea of throwing in like just a small row of red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the black and white, you know, for him. Um, but I, uh, there aren't that many, to me, knitters that, that I, that I am inspired by because I'm not a pattern follower. I'm not a, you know, make the sweater thing. 
So, so just people that are in fiber arts, like there, there's a woman, there was a woman, Lenore Tawney, mm-hmm. who was in New York, uh, turned out to be a friend of Agnes Martin, who oh, beautiful. is, is a, also an artist that I like. Um, and of course, Annie Elbers and her weavings, mm-hmm. um, you know, so it's just, I get, there was a show at the Chicago Museum, Art Museum last spring fall whenever who oh, can that weaving show at the art institute yeah oh, that was insane it was so phenomenal and i could have stayed there for days looking mm-hmm. at stuff, you know it was just it and that's even though it's not my medium per se that inspires me mm-hmm. that makes me want to try something different um there's a a, a nova scotian knitter writer um designer who i have become friends with and she's the one that really got me expanding my mind for color and patterns and stitches and make don't don't make it rectangle make it wacky shapes and yeah her name is jane thornley so um i would say as a knitter she's probably influenced me more than anybody and like that the square that you're working on right now would be sort of a manifestation of that influence uh yeah a little bit yeah her the 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 purple and green one in the window Mm -hmm. is much more even though that's i didn't do this to it it's the changing of colors changing of stitches so that it gives it different texture um and it's it can be more fun yeah, and the holes, like the, the breathing yes. of the, is also that weave is so interesting to look at. Um, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being such a good partner in the arts. I'm very happy that you and David Hinsky, the painter, have moved to Evanston because <laughs> you've done, you've been so enthusiastic about activating and sharing, and it's, it's wonderful to have you in this community. So thank you. Oh, thank you. And Evanston Made has just been, for me, Kind of a godsend. I mean, getting involved and meeting other artists and having a place to to go and meet people and, and the, the things that Liz Kramer is teaching us on Instagram Amazing. is all is all so good. So I we're we're thrilled to be here. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for today, Carolyn. Have an awesome day. You too. Be well. <laughs>